Now on to story number nine. It is time for this week's SoCal Spotlight. No matter what you want to do, chances are you'll find it in beautiful Pasadena. Our Sheba Turk is live there now to show us around a fascinating museum. Give us an education, sheeps. <laughs> Oh, Rachel, I've got some beautiful art for you this morning. We are inside the Norton Simon Museum, and a lot of people are familiar with the outside because if you watch the Rose Parade, it runs right along Colorado Boulevard. So we are taking you inside this morning. This is known around the world as one of the most remarkable private art collections. Emily Talbot is the chief curator here, and she's going to show us around this morning. You were telling me that most people are familiar with the outside. That's right, and the outside is something to see. We have a beautiful sculpture garden, as you can see, taking a peek out the back door there. Yeah, it is very, very beautiful here. It is, and we really want the space itself to be part of the visitor experience. Awesome. Okay, so take us through some of it this morning. And, you know, the first thing I wanted to know was who is Norton Simon? How did this collection come about? So Norton Simon was an industrialist who earned his fortune by identifying underperforming companies and making them profitable. Mm -hmm. In the 1950s, he turned his attention to collecting art. And between the 1950s and the 1980s, he put together one of the most incredible collections of private work anywhere in the world. Very nice. And very different kinds of art. That's right. We have strengths in 19th century French art, which you can see around me here. Also 20th century American painting, European art between the 15th and 18th centuries, and downstairs an incredible collection of South and Southeast Asian sculpture. Yeah, it's all very, very gorgeous. Do you have some favorite pieces? Oh, it's tough to pick one of my children, but <laughs> um, I myself am a specialist in 19th century French art, and I love the impressionist painter Edgar Degas. Okay. He was also a sculptor. So so you can see next to you some examples of his sculpture. Very nice. And in our collection, we have one of the largest collections of his sculpture anywhere. So we're really proud of that. And you can see it displayed elsewhere in the galleries. Yeah, that's what's really cool. It's not just paintings. You've got sculptures here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's walk over here. Tell me what we're seeing on this wall. Okay, so this gallery is really celebrating the very end of the 19th century in France, and we have six paintings by Vincent van Gogh, mm -hmm. a name that's pretty familiar to most, and they span the 10 years in which he was working. So you can see four paintings on the gallery wall there, mostly dating to his Netherlandish period, and then on this main wall here, he moves to France, color gets brighter and more exciting, yeah. and you can see some examples of that here. Yeah, no, this is very, very cool. Let's step into this room over here and tell me what we're seeing now. So this gallery is really dedicated to works by Edgar Degas, which you can see on the right, some of his famous dancing scenes, mm -hmm. sculptures that relate to them, and a wonderful painting of two women ironing, a kind of unusual subject perhaps, yeah. um, but a really powerful one in terms of the way that the artist was handling paint, giving you this sense of the palpability of those wonderful shirt cuffs in the front. Very cool. What's also neat, as large and beautiful as this is, this is literally the tip of the iceberg of this collection. That's right. We have a collection of 12,000 works of art here. Wow. Under 1,000 of them are on view, wow. so we use our temporary rotating spaces to bring out treasures from the vault as often as we can. That's really, really cool. Do you have some favorites that maybe aren't in the museum right now? Oh, the art in the museum right now? Well, we're soon to be sending our wonderful still life by Zerberon, a Spanish painter from the 17th century, out to the Museo del Prado. Mm -hmm. So we're excited to kind of expand the museum's reach to Europe later this year. Um, we also lend pretty generously to the Huntington, so you can see some works from our American collection there. Yeah, this is really cool. And some of these names I think that you're all familiar with, as I was telling you, I'm, I don't know much about art. I know what's pretty and what's not. And then some of the big famous names, Van Gogh, Picasso, they're here, though, which is really cool. I know. I think people are always surprised at the treasures that are right here in Pasadena. Yeah, it's very neat. And then, of course, earlier this week, you had the Rose Parade pass through. I'm sure that's such a great environment outside. Yeah, I think people are very familiar with the building and its look from seeing it on TV. Mm -hmm. They come inside and they're really taken aback by how splendid the collection is, how serene the galleries are. We often hear visitors say that we're really the perfect size for an afternoon visit. Yeah, this is really cool. What do you hope people learn when they come here? I think we want them to have a kind of one-on-one -on -one communion with great works of art. We don't want them to be distracted. We want them to feel like they can take their time and look really, really closely. And where would you suggest someone start? Even as I came in this morning, I was like, which side should we look at first? There's so much to look at. I know. Well, we do put one of our most famous works of art right here, front and center, in our main um, 19th century gallery, and that would be Vincent van Gogh's Patience Escalier, A Portrait of a Peasant. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, well, I'm going to set it back over to you, Rachel. We're looking at the most famous one that people like to see here. And I don't know, this might be my first time seeing a Picasso and van Gogh in person. That is pretty cool. Beautiful and absolutely priceless, right, Sheeps?